if you are anything like me, one of the most exciting things about this time of year is being able to wander around your garden and select seed from your favourite flowers, your favourite vegetables, your favourite crop and save them for next year. Whereas in itself that is a fairly straightforward process, there are various pitfalls along the way. So what I'm going to do today is show you what you should and what you shouldn't be doing to ensure that your seed stays as fresh and as viable as it possibly can do until the next season. One of the best flowers to demonstrate the right time to pick your seed with is um, the wonderful, wonderful gardener's friend, the calendula. You can see now we're right at the end of October, it is still flowering fantastically. But if we look, we've got various stages of growth on this plant. So we've got the fully grown flower, we've got the bud here, we've got what happens when all the petals come off and the seeds start to form. And then if we look here, you can see this has already started to fall itself. We have got the lovely dry seeds that we can then plant again next year. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go for these seeds, I'm going to pick a few heads and then I'll take them into the greenhouse and show you the next step to making sure that we have got a viable crop for the spring. Okay, I've brought the seeds up to the greenhouse now and what I've got, I've got a few seed heads in different stages. So this one, as you can see, is still a bit green. The full goodness of the plant has probably not yet reached the seeds. You could still use it. After all, you know, if you buried that you would probably get a self-seeded plant next year. I'm not going to use that because we have got so many ripe and ready to use. So all I'm going to do is put those on there because the most important thing when storing your seeds is to make sure that they are thoroughly dry. Now the reasons for this is obvious really. If you are going to be storing something for about what can be four, five, six months even, you do not want any moisture to get into the seed because you know as soon as a seed receives moisture it will think it is time to grow or it will start to go mouldy. So these seeds will now be left on there for about a week because even though they look dry as old bones we need to make sure they are just perfect use something that's going to allow good air circulation and not going to retain any moisture. So for example, I've got this old riddle here um, which allows the air to flow through and around each seed head but you can actually just place the seeds out on an old newspaper, some kitchen towels, something that is absorbent so that no moisture is retained in the seed head whatsoever. Okay, these have been drying out for a week now. These have just been in an old soil sieve. And uh, what you'll find, <laughs> do make sure if you're using a sieve that the holes are small enough so the seed's not gonna go through. However, with this, because the seed heads did just start to expel the seeds themselves, what I did was I just put a plain piece of white paper underneath so you could see it a bit better really. And you can see there that the majority of the seeds have fallen away from the plant. I haven't had to do anything to them at all. If there are still some that are stuck, I think these, oh yeah, you can see here, in the seed head itself, just give them a little bit of persuasion. You don't really want to be putting the whole of this head into storage. Again, it's got a bigger surface area, it's going to attract moisture a little bit better. You want to have your nice, small, dry seeds. So get rid of any chaff, any extra bits and pieces, and you will be left with a whole pile of beautiful dry seeds. On larger seeds, you know when they're thoroughly dry, when you can pop your thumbnail in 
and it won't leave an indentation. So I can see that these need a lot longer before they are thoroughly dried out. Now for me, what I found over the years is the best way for me to store seed is using a paper envelope. Obviously, if you've only got tiny seeds, you're only going to want one of these small money envelopes. But, you know, if you've got a huge pile of, I don't know, squash seeds, you might want something bigger or bigger again. The reason being is that the paper is going to prevent moisture forming in and around the seeds. You can use plastic bags for storage. These were sent to me a year ago from a good friend of mine and they are still completely viable to get these seeds. But what you have to do even more so than with the paper envelopes is make sure that your seeds are bone dry before they go in. Try and make sure you've got as much air out of, as possible. These bags with the locking closures are particularly good for that and yeah there's no reason as long as you keep an eye on them that they will not store as long as those in paper envelopes. What I would do if I had any doubt at all would be um, pop in a packet of silica which will help to absorb any extra moisture. The next best piece of equipment that you can have is a pen. Now, if you know me, you will know that labelling is my Achilles heel. <laughs> Before you even pop your seeds in the envelope, make sure it has got a nice clear label telling you what sort of seed it is and most importantly, the date. them and labelled them, they are ready to put away somewhere safe for next year. This is where the trouble can begin. You can, once you're sure they're dry, whether you've used a silica bag, whether you've used an airtight bag, uh, whether you've used a paper envelope, whatever you've used, as long as you're sure they are dry, you can put them in a plastic takeaway tub, for example. These fit beautifully, nice shape. They will fit beautifully. Oh, probably 10 packets of seeds in one of those. You can store them in a tin. You can store them in the fridge. A lot of people store it in the fridge. The only problem with the fridge is you do not want any moisture whatsoever to build up on these seeds and make them mouldy. So make sure once they are dry, you are not going to reintroduce moisture. So they will need to be stored somewhere cool, dry and preferably low light level. Do not pop them in the shed in their envelope like that thinking oh that's great they look really neat and tidy I'll just pop them on the bench there and I'll come and collect them next time because my oh my those critters will soon find out about that free seed and the next time you go up to your shed <laughs> It's probably all going to have disappeared. Do not put them anywhere where moisture can be reintroduced to the seed before it is ready. Okay, so they need to be in a nice, dry, preferably airtight container so that the seed remains in this dormant state until you decide when it's ready to grow again. For the same reason, you do not want to put these seeds somewhere very, very light. So for example, do not store them like this in your greenhouse. Because again, not only will it have a lot of light, even during the winter, it will have such a severe temperature fluctuation over the winter months that it will not know if it's coming or going and it may well decide to start shooting itself so that by the time you open it in the spring half of your seeds have already started to shoot and died off. If you want to go that extra step you can pop your seeds in the freezer for I would say a day or two do not leave them in there and that will help to kill 
any insects or eggs that you have picked up with your seeds because there's bound to be some. Usually once they're in an airtight container they will die off naturally anyway but it's just an extra precaution that some people take.